So I want to introduce our next SKUCon story speaker. I'm going to be very brief in saying that Daryl Griffin has been a dear friend to us for some time. And when we were thinking about SKUCon stories this year, we thought of Daryl immediately because she is just one of these people who can walk into a room, she's got this quiet confidence, and then she's got everyone's attention. And it happened last night, I loved it. She came into the dinner, we had a sponsored dinner in this sassy leopard skin outfit. I might be getting that wrong, she's gonna shoot daggers at me. And I was like, whoa, Daryl Griffin has arrived. Daryl is the founder of Accolade. She's been in the industry for almost 30 years, or I think maybe 30 years, maybe this, this year. Um, she was also the recipient of the Ted Olson Humanitarian Award, which is given to people that have been so uh, thoughtful in terms of giving back to the industry, and it gives me great, great pleasure to welcome Daryl Griffin to the stage to share a story with us. Thank you, Mark. Yes. Thank you. Good morning, SKU community. Glad to see all of you and glad to be here with you today. I attended the very, very first SKUCon in 2014. I know that ages me, but I will tell you, while it had the great energy in the Inspire Theater, it is nothing like this morning. I want to thank all of those that preceded me for setting the bar so high, and I certainly hope that I can come through for you as well as they did. I want to talk to you today about slaying the giant, how a teeny tiny company like Accolades Incorporated can do business with UPS, Home Depot, Coca-Cola, IBM, and, and companies like that. And I'll start out with a quote. You may have read the book. It was a 2014 bestseller, and it was called, If You Want to Walk on Water, You've Got to Get Out of the Boat. If you want to walk on water, you've got to get out of the boat. What is that? It's called take action. It can't be I wish. As Memo said this morning, it can't be I hope. It's got to be what I'm going to do. So how did we do it? And I'll share that with you. Five strategies. Number one, know why you want to do it. You want to do business with X? Why? Oh, because it's a great marquee client. Oh, because you can put all of their things in your showroom and show people that you did all these wonderful uh, projects. No, that's not why. Oh, you want to add to your bottom line. No, not why. So why do you want to do business with IBM or with Coca-Cola or with, it, with the Major League Baseball team or any of these other huge entities and you know that you are small? You want to do business with them because you want to help them make money. You want to improve their brand image. You want to know your why and how you can help them. Number two, know your numbers. Yep, you got to know about your P&L. Do you have the time? Do you have the money? Do you have the talent? Do you have the resources to go to work for them? Because if you don't have all of those things, all of those things, it's not going to work. I had a major client once that drove me insane, or my P&L insane, because of the number of, they will not pay for samples and overnight freight. What did that do to my bottom line? Eroded it. So if you don't know your numbers, don't go after the big fish. Because you don't know if you can afford to go to the, to the RFP. You don't know if you can afford to get in all the samples. You don't know if you can afford to go to all their trade shows. And you got to know that by knowing your why and knowing your numbers. What else? What do you know about them? Hmm. Are you aligned with them strategically, their values, their culture? Don't ignore those things. Are they going to margin cap you? Yes, I have major clients. We cannot exceed X margin because we turn in a report every month of all of our sales. If that's going to hit your bottom line in a negative way, you don't need to be there. What are their terms? When do they pay you? 90 days turns into what? 120. You are exactly right. But if you know your numbers, which was number two, you're going to know about them, and you're going to know whether you should go after that piece of business. Because I'll tell you, 90 will turn into 120, and 120 will turn into the next, and the next, and the next, and you're chasing it. 
So you might not be able to afford that. What's the next one? Know your competition. Who's in there? Who do they do business with now? Who do they value? Why do they value them? And when they tell you that they're going to let you, allow you to pursue their business, you know about the company, but what do you know about the competitor that's in there? Back in the day when I started my company in 1990, I used all of my family and all of my friends. This was pre-internet. I used all of them to call all of my competitors and get their brochures, handouts, whatever. So I would know how they went to market. Today it's easier. You Google them. You go online and you find out what do they do. And then you talk to people. Not only what do they do, as Memo said this morning, they sell pens and pencils just like we do. But what do they do best? And that's your point where you have to come into that business about what they do best. Finally, number five, it's the dreaded three letters. You hate it, I hate it, but the reality is there's going to be an RFP, RFI, RFQ, RF, whatever you want to call it, if you want to do business with a big company. No stepping around it. If you do not have the time, the talent, or the resources, don't pursue Goliath. You're David. I'm David out there. You've got to have teams to break that RFP up and to go through it. Be authentic on there. Be honest. Be truthful. If question 33 asks you, if you have a sustainability program at your company and you call your sustainability program that you use both sides of the copy paper, <laughs> it's not going to really work because question 34 is going to say, upload a copy. I don't have one. I do use both sides of the copy paper. Fortunately, with Common SKU, we have reduced the amount of paper. But the reality is you've got to tell them the truth on there. They'll value that and respect it. So those are the five things we did. Now what about the other pieces that go into that? It's a team approach with a major company. Do you have the time? Because they will chew up a lot of your time. We've got four of them in our small company. They take a lot of time. Do you have the tools? Do you have the talent? Do you have people that are able to take care of this large client? Keep in mind, nobody just buys promotional products in a big company. None. No one. They buy solutions, years of service programs, new hire onboarding, recruitment. They're not buying pens and pencils just to buy them. You're either relevant, different, or gone. They do not have to keep us. They do not need us unless we are relevant, unless we are trendsetters. Become a partner and present yourself that way. I never want to be a supplier on their supplier list or a vendor on their vendor list. I am their partners, and partners know about campaigns at the very beginning on the ground floor. Suppliers and vendors come in at the end, and they do the one-offs. You pick which one you want to be. Offer value-added services. Offer to work with their, uh, their agency of record. Offer to work with their design people. Offer to do a survey to understand. Those are the things they value. Be responsive. They take a lot of time. Be authentic. Be nimble. Most of all, be kind. Be kind. When you didn't get it, that's OK. Be kind anyway. You want to turn strangers into friends and friends into clients and clients into raving fans because those raving fans are going to do what for you? Source of referrals. That's how we've stayed alive. Be lean and efficient. Use everybody on your team and you need to control your expenses. I had to let a client go. You all know them in this room. Their major brand color is red. Two years left on my contract because my expenses were getting out of line. And finally, know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, 
and know when to run. You have got to figure that out there. Finally, if there is a Goliath that you're looking in the mirror, if there is a Goliath in front of you, there is a David within you. I know that and I have experienced that. Thank you very much. I want, I, uh, so we're trying to figure this out real quick. I want you guys to know, I have interviewed a lot of people. I've known a lot of people in the industry. Um, but when it comes to integrity and when it comes to uh, grit, I, have, I don't know anyone at the top of the list other than Daryl. And I want to just mention this one thing. She's been battling. You wouldn't know it. You would never know it. She's been battling cancer for the past 18 months. And I just wanted to say in front of everybody, Daryl, that you have no idea what an inspiration you are to so many of us. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Um,